gigantic philodendron gigantium. I had to say it all dramatic like that just because it has a very sinister name. Not really sinister, but I guess its name does speak volumes about to what it is. Um, and you could tell why it's called the philodendron gigantium because its leaves are larger than a person's head. And they're beautiful. Absolutely stunning. Um, but uh, I got this plant, I think it was last summer. And the problem is, is that with this plant, um, it gets so big and I just don't have like the best room for it. So I've had it over here in this corner where it's not getting like a crazy good amount of light that it really wants. And it's been shooting out crazy large, long aerial roots. So that's what we're going to do is we are going to propagate it. And then we're going to turn it into another plant, which we will then deal with next summer, you know, so we don't have time for that right now. So first things first, I'm going to cut directly underneath. The aerial nodes, aerial roots, there we go, which is about, oh gosh, about a quarter of an inch down. So you can see this is the latest leaf that had come out, and uh, its leaf is also gigantic. And uh, you can see that there's a new little leaf that's coming out of it. And I say little right now because that thing will grow to be massive. Um, and so I'm going to go out of my bed. Pop. Okay. I've got that one, and we're gonna do one more, and then we're gonna hopefully see this thing grow back, which it will because it is a very uh, strong plant. That's what I love about philodendrons to begin with, is that they are so, so, um, they're so hardy. Okay, I'm gonna cut this baby. Cool. I felt bad. I'm glad that we were able to save this leaf because this leaf had no room to actually be on the back over there. And so it was getting no light, but now it will. And let's see, I can probably give them some more light by turning that around like that. Cool. So we have that, which is nice because then it, it provides for some more room for um, the plant to photosynthesize. And I had just recently washed its leaves, so they should be in good shape. Um, I'm just gonna grab one more of these yellow leaves while I'm up here. And then what's nice is that um, we have all of our cuttings, but one thing that I really want to make sure to do just because obviously like there's a cut up there where I, I cut those cuttings from into the plant's um, stem. And so what I'm going to do is just to make sure that that mother plant there remains safe, I'm going to take some liquid copper fungicide and I'm going to spray the top part of that just so it'll callus over and we won't have to worry about any like bacterials or anything like that getting into the plant. So now that we have our cuttings, we're going to do a little bit of um, decorating until they're able to root up. Now that we have our cuttings, the next part is going to involve hammering them. Not really. We're going to hammer the wall because back here is where we used to have a bunch of philodendron, uh, hardly philodendron to be precise, because of we're using a philodendron here, this being the philodendron gigantium. And uh, overall, from that plant, we got six cuttings, seven cuttings, six cuttings, I'm sorry, six cuttings, but I'm putting one of them in the living room. This one, though, I thought could be a fun kind of uh, philodendron gigantium type wall. And so what's interesting is that, as I was explaining a little bit earlier, how... Um, this plant gets its name being gigantium. I mean, these leaves, this one being a younger one, a smaller leaf. Um, but when you look at even this leaf, which I believe was, is only two months old now. I mean, that's a pretty big leaf, you know? Um, but what's nice is that, as I showed you too, they have these big aerial roots and that'll help it root up. So we should be in good shape here. Uh, and these plants are very, very interesting. And I'm gonna get a little bit into them here in a second, but first, we are going to start putting together the propagation wall. You know, uh, it's not going to be interesting to see me put this part up. Why don't we just uh, fast forward? Okay, so the boring part is over, unless the rest of this is just boring to begin with. But uh, we are now going to move on to putting the plants inside of these. And I'm hoping that they'll fit because some of their arrow roots are really long. This is the problem, like I was saying. I mean, look at some of these aerial roots. They are like four to five inches long, and that could be a problem tucking them in 
But you know what? We're gonna give it. We're gonna give it a shot because that's what we're here to do. You know. Um. So let me find a place to put this. And uh, I don't want to ruin these or break the aerial roots because those will help us spur the growth of more roots faster. Let's see. Ah. <laughs> this is not a good thing for somebody with anxiety to take part in. <laughs> I just don't want to hurt the plant. <laughs> It'll be fine. Let's see. If I actually take this off, that might help, Kevin. There we go. And yes, I will talk to myself throughout this whole process. So we're going to have one that's going to be sticking out, but that's fine. You know what? It'll live. It'll learn how to live with it. That's just how it's going to go. That's how it's going to be. And I'm trying to figure out how to place it where it will <laughs> not tip over should be an interesting thing. That, that'll work well. Whoa, or will it? It's a good thing that I have these handy hooks here. <laughs> See, it's always good to be prepared when uh, working with plants, especially when it comes to design, because you never know what kind of stuff you're going to need. What a useful thing, those hooks coming in handy for once. All right, so I think this is one of the smaller ones, and I believe that this fella will go in here. And uh, where I cut him off at, it shouldn't be a problem fitting in there. And plop. I don't know why. Um, it's interesting because this side of my apartment, the kitchen, is all the way in the back. I only have western facing windows. Yet, whenever I put up a propagation wall up here, they tend to root really fast and really nice. Which wears me out because it's not like they're getting any real like natural light coming in here. But... I don't know, maybe it's like the light bouncing off the white walls and blah, 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 and light stuff, and I don't know. But we'll figure it out. We won't figure it out. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> All right. We have three more to go, friends. And uh, what I want is I want to make sure that the ones that we're having go over this way will point in the direction that we want them to be in. So... We've got this guy who kind of does like a bottleneck turn over here. And we'll go into this one, I believe. Um, you know what's interesting about these plants? I mean, like most tropical plants, these fall under the Araceae family because uh, they're philodendron and they're climbers. They're actually um, uh, hemophytes, so it's like they spend part of their uh, happy hemiapophytes is what it is. Uh, they spend part of their uh, lives growing in the ground, and the other part they spend growing on trees, which is where we get these aerial roots from. But you find these mostly in like the Car uh, Caribbean and South America. They like really high humidity, though. Uh, super easy to grow as a house plant because they have uh, grown to get used to just normal um, type humidity inside of a home that they do prefer in the wild uh, up to 60% humidity. And uh, they do like their warmer temperatures, though if you are growing them inside your home, all you really need to do is make sure the temperature is above like 60 degrees, 55 at you know, the least amount. Um, I have had these near my window when I first got it. And last winter, when it got really cold and I didn't have the heat up all the way, just because it was so close to the um, window, these leaves would get so um, pale and they would just start to get very thin, thinner than they are, and they started to wilt away. So if you do end up getting one, make sure that you do not keep it close to a window or any place that has like a drafty situation because um, they're really beautiful plants and it would be a shame to have to lose one just because of that situation. Uh, what is also interesting about these is that they're really great space fillers. So let's say if you have a home and you want a nice house plant and everybody else has, you know, they have their um, big monsteras, their big uh, birds of paradise, and you want something different, this is a really good uh, different kind of plant to go with for several reasons. One, I mean, not only is it huge and it fills up a good chunk of space, uh, but these leaves on here, they will get so huge. Um, in a home setting, from everything that I've read online and what I've been told, 
Uh, and I have seen it, trust me, because I've had this for over a year now. And this plant will, during the summer, grow so much if it's in the right conditions. And its leaves uh, can get up to be five feet long. Now, granted, the ones that I have here, the longest leaf is probably about, um, I would say, close to two feet. But that's because I also didn't have it in really great conditions. Like, I didn't have space near my window, so I had to put in an area. didn't get as much light, but it was still growing rapidly. Uh, but yeah, their leaves can get up to be five feet long. And uh, the plant itself inside of a home can grow to be eight feet tall inside of a home. So if you really want a space filler, you can get yourself a philodendron giganteum. Though I have only seen them at one plant shop in Denver, which is Reroot. And that was the only place that I saw it at, and that's where I got that a long time ago. And I still have yet to see it um, again at Reroot. So it's kind of like a hit or miss type of situation. But certainly uh, a really cool plant to get. My problem is, is that I need to spend some time figuring out where I can best put this plant to survive um, and have a good life. So that's why I took a bunch of these propagations. One, not only to just kind of clear that space and let the plant kind of figure itself out, but... I figure also what I can do with this is now I can take this plant uh, once it's all done and propagated and ready to pot up and become a new plant. I can then uh, turn it into a new plant and figure out where I want it to go. And that is hopefully something I will figure out by the spring. <laughs> I'm assuming, at least hoping so, because the fact that it is a philodendron and for the most part philodendron root pretty simply, pretty fast. Um, and since this one already has long aerial roots that are like several inches long and could probably be just potted up with a, in a pot right now if I wanted to and let the aerial roots just kind of do their magic, uh, this will probably only take a couple weeks, I'm assuming, to actually root into, um, have its, you know, brand new roots that we need in order to kind of just plant it up the way we want it to. So that'll be interesting. <laughs> and then what I'd like to do is kind of condense it into just kind of like one um, big, leafy, shorter plant. Because as it is right now in my room, um, it was climbing up a moss pole that I created. And because of the lack of light, this thing, the stems are growing so long, so it would stretch up as far as it could to try to find the light. But I don't have to put it through that. So hopefully, fingers crossed, this one will be a charm. And that's the nice thing about plants, you know, is that if something doesn't work out, you can just literally chop them up, prop them, and start from scratch. Gotta love that. <laughs> we have one more to go, and then we're done. And that last leaf that we had, or have rather, is the newest one that grew out on it, because you can see this is where the new uh, growth shoot will happen. Um, but I think we're going to switch these babies up and put this one in the middle. And hopefully... It will fit without breaking its aerial roots. You've got this. Oh, yay, it did it. It did it. Yay. What a good plant. <laughs> Although it's pushing out the water now. We don't want that. Cool. Awesome. Okay, so we have... Uh, we have this guy, and so now we're going to have to move his little hooky hook there. Put this guy, I think, there. Yeah, why not? Maybe this guy goes here. Do, 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 do. Because it's kind of like looking out this way. I'm trying to follow the direction of where where they're looking. <laughs> That'll kind of help with, I guess, the design aspect of it, right? Okay, so we got that. And then we've got this guy. How lovely. Although now we need to move his hook over here. Sometimes, I think to myself that the propagation portion is incredibly fun, and then other times I think it's incredibly stressful. <laughs> but what I do enjoy about it is that you can be really creative with stuff like this. Like, it's not like you just have to take, 
you know, um, a glass of water and uh, put the plant cutting inside of it and then hide it off somewhere for nobody to see. When in reality, what you can do is you can create something really cool looking that kind of stands out and is beautifies up your home to uh, give it a different kind of unique look. And quite frankly, this wall, like I've told you guys in the past, it literally had nothing on it. It was so boring. Um, and so I was like, what can I do plant-wise there that would kind of look neat and be different? And in comes a propagation wall. <laughs> All right, so this is what we have so far. And I have to be honest, I'm not 100% thrilled with it just yet. So I was thinking I need to move this guy over to where I was initially going to have it, this guy in the middle, and that guy up there. This is like a game of Tetris almost. <laughs> Plant edition. Okay. So then, whoosh. You, sir, I'm going to give down here. And then you, sir, are going to go up hither. And then we're going to turn this guy around. Turn it around. Da, 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 and talk to myself and sing to myself while doing plant stuff. And I'm assuming none of it is. None of it is great. <laughs> so this is what I have so far. But I do want to add some other things to it. Uh, what those will be, I'm going to have to figure out, I guess. You know, here's the thing. Um, I like the fact that there are all of these giant philodendron gigantium leaves all over here. And I added in some, uh, boy, some Hartley philodendron, some philodendron uh, beauties around here as well. But, but I feel like it's a little bit too green. So I think... In the next couple of days, because it's, what is it, almost 9 o'clock now, I am tired. And so with that, I'm going to call it a night and end here, but let's just say uh, this is a work in the making.